Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. I know that this is two talking head videos in a row and I'd really hope to do a normal video today, but unfortunately I was gone all day getting stuff ready for this little trip that we have, or at least, you know, as much of a kind of vacation that you can have with the thing that shall not be named anyway. But regardless, don't worry, I will be doing videos while I'm gone. I actually got a new mic specifically for that. Those will likely be talking head videos, but I'm not going to be gone for very long, so it's only going to be one or two. Anyway, we have some really big news today. Starting with Intel beginning mass production of 11th gen, Epic Games Launcher hurts performance, one-click boost in Cyberpunk, Intel's 11th gen gets spanked, prices going up, and RTX 3090 owners will cry. So yeah, starting things off, we have a tweet from leaker Raichu, who, as we can see, states that, right here, real production time, this is referring to Intel's Rocket Lake, so their 11th gen CPUs, you can see, will begin production in January. And of course, that's mostly what we've heard around the February timing, at least that's what I've been hearing so far. So they're probably going to be available sometime in February or March. Either way, it is pretty interesting to see that mass production is going to begin pretty early. With that said, it's not all good news, as a recent report concerning Epic Games Launcher is actually making AMD Ryzen CPUs run hotter even without any games running. So we're talking just the launcher itself. We can actually see right here, well, this originated on Reddit, and you can see that it has a ton of comments, 10.8 thousand likes, and not only that, but Hot Hardware actually did their own tests and found that with the only variable differentiating is just simply having Epic Games Launcher uh, running in the background, it jumped from 34 degrees Celsius and 1% CPU utilization to 7% and 56.78 degrees. So we're talking 20 degrees here, over 20 degrees Celsius just from a game launcher. That's pretty wild to say the least. Now, I will say that this does seem to only affect Ryzen CPUs, so Intel CPUs, at least for the most part, don't seem to be affected or at least as much as Ryzen CPUs, which to me means it's likely some kind of coding issue rather than something nefarious, like it's trying to you know, do something in the background that it really shouldn't or it's trying to run code, data mine, or anything like that. Of course, I could be wrong, and this could be a major issue and something that people are just now seeing, and this may force them to respond to say, hey, uh, the application is actually doing this. And with the fact that we're talking about a 6% higher utilization with the 5950X and causing that much of a temperature issue, that's weird. Now, I will say that Epic hasn't responded. When they do, I'll likely update this story, but as of now, hot hardware, um, at least did confirm that this is a very real issue with nothing but the launcher itself running and not installing a game or anything like that. This is the kind of difference you get. And they also tested it with GOG, Steam and things like that. And this didn't happen at all. So this is definitely weird. I would look out for it if you are a Ryzen owner and let me know what you found down in the comments below. Is this happening or are you not having an issue with it? And next up for today, if you're one of the many users having some pretty major issues running Cyberpunk on even remotely aging, I wouldn't even really call it aging hardware, but something that isn't like the best of the best, with Cyberpunk 2077, this could help. This right here was originally done by programmer Codezilla and was shown off via his YouTube channel where he basically released an optimizer for Cyberpunk 2077 that claims, at least according to him, that you can get up to 30 FPS by simply changing the settings. Now, according to uh, Tom's Hardware, this is effectively a hidden developer settings that you aren't able to see as the end user, but using this easy optimizer, you can actually go in and get much better performance. As you can see down here, he actually got he went using a 1070 Ti from 42 to 51 FPS all the way up to 54 and 71 FPS in the highs. And here's the thing though, that's only with balanced mode. If you do max boost mode, it actually up frame rates as high as 80 FPS. So if you're someone whose uh, hardware is really struggling to get you know reasonable FPS, whether you're trying to get to 60 or possibly even 30, this could seriously help. 
Although at the same time, as always, with any kind of unofficial anything, I can't guarantee it won't mess up the game or anything like that. From what I read, yeah, you basically have to move the executable to a root folder in your Cyberpunk 2077 installation. Still, I can't guarantee this isn't going to cause any kind of issues, but at the same time, if you can't play it anyway, this is probably not a bad option. I'll have a link in the description below. And next up for today, we're finally starting to see Cinebench scores for Intel's newest 11th gen CPUs. As you can see here, we have a poster on Chip Hell who actually shared a Cinebench R20 score for the eight core 16 thread. He claims, now this does, uh, obviously this is an engineering sample, but he claims that it is the 11,700, you know, engineering sample. Now, keep in mind that this is the 65 watt model, and according to him, the all core clock is 3.8 gigahertz. So, of course, it isn't amazing, but at the same time, the score isn't all that great as well. Single core score is fairly decent at 529, and the all core score 4,672. Now, the reason I say it isn't that great is because it absolutely gets decimated by the Ryzen 5000 series. From what I've seen, I will say that it seems like the single core score is really, really good on these new 11th gen. But when they get to the all core stuff, it doesn't do that great. I would assume it's likely due to thermal issues. Anyway, you can see here that the 5800X completely decimates it, but that's not all. When we go over to the 6 core 12 thread, and remember that this is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, when we go over to AMD's 5600X, it does do better in single core, but that's fine. Once again, this is not the highest clocked one, though neither is the 5600X, but it actually gets really close in its all core score. 4390 versus Intel's 4,672. Now, once again, this is an engineering sample, so it could do quite a bit better, but at least as of now, it's doing pretty terrible. And next up for today, things are not looking good, at least when it comes to hardware prices next year. As you can see, major foundries like TSMC and UMC are reporting that their capacities are fully loaded. Not only that, but NAND flash controller ICs like Silicon Motion and Fizon are now unable to meet upside demand from their clients. And because Q1 2021 contracts are right around the corner, they are thinking about raising prices estimated to be the range of 15 to 20 percent. And obviously that means that it is going to affect NAND flash components, so expect some potential price increases there. And this brings us to our final story where we've basically confirmed that NVIDIA's the so far rumored RTX 3080 Ti is official, at least as official as it can get without NVIDIA themselves making the announcement. As you can see right here during a search, now unfortunately I tried to look for it though I'm not really sure uh, where this user HXL is located. Um, because the fonts are slightly different. Unfortunately, I was not able to find it, but they shared a screenshot that it supports the 20 gigabyte 3080 Ti, which means that those rumors are almost certainly true, and a 20 gigabyte 3080 Ti is coming. Now, the reason I said 3090 owners are likely gonna cry is because this is set to be $500 cheaper than the 3090, yet the major difference between the two is only going to be four gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. Meaning, unless you really do have an 8K TV, you likely won't be able to use those four gigabytes anyway. And to be honest, I would love to see what kind of performance you can get 8K wise, with the 20 gigabyte version. Because at least if the rumors are correct, the 3080 Ti comes with the same amount of cores as the 3090. Basically, current 3090 owners have taken a giant bath, and that really does suck. Not only that though, but this also effectively confirms the 12 gigabyte 3060, which at least up until now was seeming like just rumors, but yeah, it pretty well seems like it's accurate. So both of those cards should be coming as an obvious reply to AMD's RX 6000 GPUs. 
So anyway, while that does it for today, I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, and we just reached 200,000 subscribers. I cannot thank all of you enough. I would have never guessed that I would have gotten to 100,000 subscribers, much less 200,000. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. And as always, have a great day.